Hi everyone. I felt like doing a little bit of jelly printing today um, and I'm not intending to make uh, brand new prints. I just want to take some pages that I have like these where I had um, rolled off my brayer on previous jelly printing sessions and I ended up with a little stack of these and I thought I'd like to add more to these so that I can make these into nice prints <clears throat> to use. And um, so I just wanted to go through and show you what I have here that I may be working on. And I uh, also had some from an even older <laughs> jelly printing session. These were on little book pages and um, just rolling, cleaning off the brayer. But I hung on to these because I know that you can layer onto these and make something that looks pretty cool. So I just wanted to show you, uh, give you an idea of what those look like. Um, I'm also going to be um, probably stamping and um, adding in some things to this book, which is, you know, my book of unwasted paint, <laughs> composition book of unwasted paint. And um, it's just you know, where I add little bits and pieces. I mean, this book is almost filled. I've just got, I mean, literally two or three pages left here at the back. But it's pretty much filled with um, with stuff. Here's another example of rolling off the brayer and then stenciling on top of that when I had leftover paint. So I just throw a bunch of leftover paint into this book a lot. I still do. I've been working in this for quite some time, several years. And uh, you just throw throw my, my leftover paint in there, and then I come back and stencil and doodle and stuff, and so then the pages end up looking like something more than what they started out as. So you can see that some of these are not finished, some of these are more finished than others. Um, I haven't gone through this book in a while. This one looks pretty complete. Uh, I would use that as it is. Um, just lots of fun things. So anyway, I'll have this open here to some of these back pages and probably roll off the brayer on uh, some of these pages as well as some um, newsprint that I've got laying here to do the same thing to clean off the brayer and such. So um, I'm just going to get started and I'm going to, uh, I want to point out to you that these papers already have color on them. So what I have to do now is choose the color that will go on that that I think is going to uh, match or uh, complement it in some way. I'm going to pull my jelly plate over here and get it situated. Okay, so I wanted to show you, for instance, this page has uh, mostly teal and some purple and there's a little bit of a like a army green uh, color over there too. So this is an idea for you. If you're not sure about choosing colors that will work together well, take your color wheel and see, I can lay this here and I can see that there's teal and purples, which are very complementary to one another, and the green, they all complement each other. They're all on the same side next to each other on the color wheel. So what I'm gonna wanna do is put something on that is going to contrast and um, I could use some of the same colors in darker shades or lighter shades, that also works. But when you wanna make a pop of color, then you wanna add a little bit of something uh, contrasting. So as I go through here and work on these prints, I'm probably not gonna talk through this, but I just wanted you to be aware of how you can do this. I may use my color wheel at some point, I may not. Um, I've, I've done this enough that I kinda of have an idea of what works well and so I'm, you may not see me bring in the color wheel to look at it. But I want you to know that you can do that if you're not yet comfortable with choosing colors to to work on say a page like this. Um, you can do that and you can add little bits of color. Um, I'm also not going to be, um, well, I, I, let me say I don't plan to use any stencils. I'm going to just be using some um, other mark making tools and I may not even cover like the whole page. I may put some paint down and put some marks in it and just pick up partial page uh, just to add to these. So I just wanted you to be aware that you can do that too. You don't always have to have a stencil. You don't always have to do a full uh, print of anything. So I just thought I'd bring you guys along and um, 
let you see what I was doing.
Here's how the prints came out. They're just, you know, adding paint with my fingers, adding paint with uh, a little squeeze bottle with some gold paint in it. And by the way, that paint, that gold paint is a Lumiere paint in bright gold. And um, I do have that in my recommended products in my Amazon store. So you can go and check that out if you're interested in that. Um, and also those little squeezy bottles uh, that I use uh, for that paint are also there. Um, I just love how these turned out. They're, they look so completely different from the original um, pages, as you can see. And if you want to jump back and look at the beginning of the video, you can kind of do a comparison because they look totally different. These are not in necessarily finished. Some of some parts of them could be finished. Uh, I don't intend to use these as full sheet uh, uh, art for anything. I intend to tear these up and use these in collage. So they can use a little bit of doodling or maybe some stenciling added and they will again be transformed. But some of them may be used just, as, just exactly as they are. If I find a color on one of them that I need for a particular project, I'll tear out you know, a corner or the, the center or whatever to get the color or whatever that I might be looking for uh, for a particular project. So um, those are the ones that I created on the sheets that I had uh, brayered uh, previously. Okay, these are the little book uh, pages and you guys saw me working on these. There's some more of that gold paint. I love how these look. They're just so they're not meant to look like anything in particular and they're just so cool in the way that they abstractly look you know <laughs> i really love how they look so um there's some i'm gonna kind of slide them over and lay them out um, as i go along and these just like the others uh can still use a little bit more this one to me obviously needs a little bit more work done on it and then these are the ones that i had dipped in that um poured out, <clears throat> excuse me, poured out paint, white paint, and I think these look really cool too. Uh, this one didn't get quite as much uh, and needs, you know, some more layers, but I think these look really neat. I think it's a neat way to change the look of a background that has a whole lot going on, even if it's just rolling off the brayer. Sometimes if it gets too much going on and too much mixed and blended, it's so busy, and I think this helps to tone it down a lot, you know. So uh, these are a few that still need a little bit more uh, done on them, and this one got nothing. So <laughs> that's just the, the luck of the draw. It just didn't get uh, anything added, so I'll just do that one next time or add stenciling to that sheet. Uh, but all of these are just fun in their own, uh, in their own ways. Um, this little um, stamp that I was using is a button that I glued to the top or the end of a cork. And I believe I used some E6000 glue to uh, glue that down. And it makes the cutest little uh, stamp. It's just unique. And um, the fact that it's homemade makes it even that much more fun. Okay, here's some uh, that are that I created that were brand new sheets. Okay, not printed on something that already had paint on it. These are um, their own uh, their own prints, and I love using that big bubble wrap. I love using any bubble wrap, but the big bubble wrap looks so awesome uh, when you use it uh, on the gel plate. I just love it, and every single one of those circles is unique. I mean, I mean, no two of them are alike at all, and I think that is just fascinating, so fascinating. So there's one. Um, I love this one. This one was cleaning off the plate, and I love how all of this came up on one pull. And it looks so layered and dimensional, and yet it was all, you know, from one pull. I love all of the little bits and things. This one had some, too. Um, I think I even held up and showed uh, to the camera how cool that looks. Uh, all of the bits that come up off the plate. And the trick to doing that is when you've, when you've left a lot of um, remnants of paint on your plate, you got to let it dry. Let it dry completely. And then when you go over it with a thin layer of paint, it will generally pick up what's left on the plate. Now this one 
as you guys saw at the end, this one was also a cleaning of the plate. And you, you saw the first pull was looked like this, and that's because I had too much paint. So I knew what happened because none of the, the dried paint was lifted, so I knew what happened, and I immediately, as this one was pulled, I immediately put a fresh piece on before that layer of paint could dry and uh, burnished it real good with my hands and, um, and of course it picked up everything off the plate. So here's where I used that little button uh, glued to the cork uh, on the plate and then pulled that plant. But I really do love these single pull things. They are so magical to me. I just love them. And let's see, there were a couple more where I cleaned the plate. Uh, this was one. And uh, this big circle, uh, I was using a mason jar lid without the flat piece and lid. I just used the ring and uh, dipped it in, uh, dipped it onto the plate. And it will come out nice and crisp and white like this. If you remember, every time you press it into the jelly plate, every time you need to stamp it off so that the paint comes off of the lid. And then when you go back to the plate again, you will be able to pick up more paint. If you don't stamp it off, you're just taking the paint that you just put on there and you're putting it in a new place and so you won't get that crisp white ring. So remember to do that to stamp off anything you're gonna do repeatedly uh, throughout. Okay, that was one of those. And this was another one where I was just cleaning up what was left on the um, plate. And these will be able to be, um, this, this one especially I can, keep printing on, on it, you know. This one might just need some doodling or stenciling or something like that, but they're all, I mean, they're just fun, and whether they're usable right this minute or not, I don't care. I just had fun playing. <laughs> and um, here's the gel, I'm sorry, the bubble wrap uh, that I printed directly. The bubble wrap went right onto this page that had some red paint, and um, I just, I love these little circles. I just love them. They're so cool. It makes me think of the plastic wrap technique in a tiny circle form. That's the first time I've ever thought of that, but that's exactly what that looks like. <clears throat> Isn't that cool? So, anyway, that's how these all turned out, and um, I'm very happy with all the color and all the yumminess of them all, and they will continue to evolve. Uh, it, if I do some doodling or stenciling, they'll continue to evolve and look completely different from the way they even look now. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and um, we will see you again uh, in the next video. Take care, everyone, and stay safe. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.